And this is Deion Dawkins, man. And you're listening to The Scoop on OwlScoop.com. You already know. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Scoop, OwlScoop.com's podcast, Season 8, Episode 35. I'm John DiCarlo. Javon Edmonds and Caden Steele are with me today. Kyle Gauss is off. What's going on, guys? Doing well. Uh, right now, got about a month left left in some semester. I think I'm ready to, to graduate, but it's been a little sad. Kate, I, I want everyone who's listening to understand that is not a lag. That was literally how Caden was speaking just now. I don't know <laughs> what just happened with Caden's getting, voice. But... He's getting uh, he's getting choked up. But Caden's always talking about like ah, it's a tough semester. It's like this is these are the the prime years of your life, buddy. Prime years of your life, you're young. Yeah, they're the prime years, but it's like, we want this school stuff to be done with, John. 18 Damn straight it. years of this nonsense. <laughs> like, come on, speed the process up. You know what happens, though, after you graduate? You know what's ahead of you? Jobs. Yeah, but at least, like, we get to do and, something we love. Like, and more we get nonsense. paid for it. Yeah, there's but, more, like. more nonsense lurking. John, I would, I would take all the rest of the nonsense over school with no, no problem. With no problem. And you know what classes you hated more than any others? Sports writing and advanced sports reporting. That's what I. Oh, we love oh, your classes, come on. John. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, we're we're going. Um, we're taking Johnny and Ramir and Declan to Buffalo Wild Wings tonight. A, a, a little known, out of the way wing spot that no one's ever heard of. Declan's yeah. never gone. <laughs> now, Caden's shouting. Declan's never gone. <laughs> No, no, Declan's just yeah. Declan's never gone to the Buffalo Wild Wings. He's never seen SpongeBob. Like Declan hasn't lived life yet. So hey, there's a there's a Will Ferrell SNL skit from the '90s where he has problems modulating the sound of his voice. I want you to watch it and get back to me. That's what you're reminding me of right now. Yeah, like you can speak at room volume into <laughs> these mics. We we've paid top shelf money for them. I think it's just the ha- headphones. It's loud. Possibly. So. There you go. Well, you live with Max Green, so you know that doesn't help your volume control either. Oh, he's going he's going to get mad at you now. Oh, uh, he'll be fine. All right, before we go any farther into the scoop here and all the great stuff that we have for you all in terms of spring football and, of course, the coaching search as Temple tries to replace Aaron McKee, I want to remind you all that the scoop is now brought to you by Greenspan and Greenspan Injury Lawyers. If you have been injured while on the road or highway and the crash was someone else's fault, the insurance company will not be on your side. You need us. Temple Law grads who will fight hard to get the compensation that you deserve. We only get paid if we win. In PA or New York, call us today at 215-261-7359. That's 215-261-7359. And you can find them on the web at greenspans-law.com. That's greenspans-law.com. That's G-R-E-N-S-P-A-N-S-law.com. Also, I want to thank all of you, our listeners, for tapping in and contributing uh, to the scoop, to the podcast, subscribing to it. Uh, our numbers over the last couple of months have been off the charts. Our listenership is up 70% in the last 14 days and more than 120% over the last month, which is insane. So we really, really, really appreciate that support uh, between the John Bonham episode, the Joe Klecko episode, our coaching search coverage and our spring football coverage. Uh, things have been great. Again, really, really appreciate you all tuning in, subscribing to the scoop and getting other people to subscribe. We always have fun doing this despite the fact that we, you know, make fun of each other and have fun at each other's expense. I see Declan lurking in the background there. Declan Landis, another member of our Alscoop.com staff. I see him lurking through the door. So, uh, and he's not here to defend himself. Famous 35s, guys, before we get into the coaching search and all our fun stuff here. Kevin Durant. Anitas William Williams. Who? Anitas William. Oh, oh Anitas Williams. Yeah, okay. Um... Gus Edwards. Yeah, Gus the boss. I'm thinking I'm thinking of a baseball player. I'm thinking of several baseball players. Um I just remember Christian Okoye. I mean he was I don't even Nigerian Nightmare. Yeah. Um hasn't Verlander wore 35 at some point in his career? Yes. With the lot or not the lines. Tigers. The tigers. <laughs> Wrong sport. Um, Wrong, sport. Wrong animal. Um I uh did Mark McGuire wear 35? I thought he was 25. Possibly. Did Ricky Henderson worth 35 at some point? He did. Yeah, McGuire was 25. Did we mention Frank Thomas? The big hurt. 
Nolan Ryan wore 35 at some point. Not not Nolan Ryan. Uh, Randy Johnson wore 35 at some point, yeah. didn't he? Did we, uh, we messed up Randy Johnson last week. I think you and I did. Yeah, we probably did. <laughs> uh, who else? I think I'm tapped out on on 30. Yeah, 35 is not the best number. It's Kevin oh, McHale probably um, more than an All Star game Jayden, once. Jayden, famous Phillies pitcher Javon. We brought him up. Oh, Cole him up. Yeah, yeah. Ray Don brought him up at uh, at, at lunch today. I'm surprised I forgot that one. Another NFL player, Mike Tolbert. Oh, Mike Tolbert. Yeah, yeah, there we go. yeah. All right. Yeah, we had lunch with Sam Cohn today. He couldn't be bothered to join the podcast, though. Well, oh, we didn't. In fairness to to Sam, we didn't invite him. John, you aren't supposed to just 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 let us come on. We could have yeah. had some fun on the message boards and let everyone kill could've. Sam. We could have, we could have. Those who still follow him on Twitter. Speaking of which, listen, as long as you still got the scoop on your following, I'm fine. But you know, don't don't take follows away from Sam. You can mute him, but don't take follows away from him. <laughs> Go follow Sam Cohn again on Twitter. It's at the Baltimore Sun, our friend Sam Cohn. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and please don't unfollow me when I move on to other pastures. I won't call them greener pastures because our school will always be the greenest pasture in my heart. Oh, but but you, other man. pastures, don't, don't unfollow me. I can me. promise you that there will, be, there will be greener pastures ahead for both of you, but I appreciate the kind words. So let's uh, let's dive back into this basketball coaching search. So, Oof. 11 days later, things have finally started to pick up. Uh, we can confirm that Penn State assistant coach Adam Fisher and Rutgers assistant, former UConn assistant, former GW head coach Carl Hobbs interviewed yesterday. Another source we spoke with said Florida Gulf Coast coach and uh, former Penn State coach. Uh, Temple fans will be familiar with this name, Pat Chambers. When Pat was at Penn State, he certainly did a good job of recruiting some really good players from the city of Philadelphia out from under Temple's nose. <laughs> and, uh, on, John. He interviewed, he interviewed <laughs> Wednesday. Uh, we can also confirm, and again, maybe things have changed in the last couple of hours. I'm not aware. Uh, we've mentioned Bruiser Flint's name on this podcast, the Kentucky assistant uh, down there with John Calipari, former UMass and Drexel head coach and former Indiana assistant. Uh, I understand that both sides have talked, but I don't know that Bruiser has formally interviewed. I think if you don't interview him, in my humble opinion, I think that's a mistake. I think Bruiser would be a good fit at Temple. I know some fans might disagree with me, but I think not interviewing him, maybe a little bit of an oversight. I think Bruiser would have the energy and the connections and the wherewithal to do a pretty good job at Temple. Certainly not the only guy cut out for the position, but that's what we're hearing uh, as of now, there are other names in the mix, but you will have to head over to alscoop.com to subscribe to get those other names because there are a few other names in the mix. And I feel like we're doing our subscribers a, a disservice if we uh, just spill all the names out here. Um, but those are the ones that we can confirm. And those you know, you'll see those out there reported elsewhere. We can confirm that, that Fisher, Hobbs, and Chambers uh, have interviewed. And uh, again, what else has changed in the last week? And we've been able to confirm now through multiple sources now that Matt Langell doesn't have interest in the Temple job, whether he had some initial interest. I'm not quite sure, but. It's some, gone now. We know that much. Yeah. Some Twitter accounts were putting out there. The Temple wasn't interested in him either. I don't know how true that is. Uh, but such if a, it is true, that is an indictment on Arthur Johnson, to say the least. Yeah. I mean, look, Arthur's entitled to his opinion and his methods i again in my humble opinion i think you're doing a disservice to the search if you don't have interest in in matt langle but such is the wonderful flow of gossip when it comes to covering a coaching search so if micah shrewsbury getting the job at notre dame ed cooley going to georgetown and kim english another person i was told a couple of days ago did not have interest in the temple job we've mentioned his name here before now kim english uh, gets swept up by providence rather quickly uh, I would fully expect Matt Langell to stay at Colgate and probably sign a new contract there. And then he can maybe look at the next coaching cycle at this time next year, if he has another good season up in uh, in gorgeous Hamilton, New York. So what we'll do here is let's look at these three confirmed names, Adam Fisher, Carl Hobbs, and Pat Chambers. Again, not the only names that are, that are out there. I, I think there, uh, we know there are other, other candidates that have interviewed, but if we're going to look at these three confirmed names and Fisher, Hobbs and Chambers, I want to go through this with with you guys and uh, go through some of the pros and cons and tell me why it would work and why it would not work. Because again, when you cover a coaching search and of all the joys that come with it, you, know, you talk to people, 
you 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 know you talk to people they're connected to a little bit of everything and and someone will always say to you yeah that's this makes sense but you gotta watch this and you sift through a lot of stuff and so again there are pros and cons to all of them we'll start with adam fisher again so he is he is an assistant at penn state has worked as an assistant at miami uh was part of the staff that helped get guys like lonnie walker there uh did interview we can confirm that he interviewed i can confirm that he's very interested in the job we'll, we'll go around the horn here why what works with adam fisher why is adam fisher a good candidate in the pros category Fisher's the only one of these three that I even think is worth entertaining, just to be honest with you. Do, do you want mediocrity or do you want success? Adam Fisher has proven he's got success recruiting kids from the area. The Monty Walkers of the world, the the, the Seth Lundys of the world. Um, he he has familiarity in the area. He can sell on in the area, excuse me, and he can sell to other recruits. But I'm going to get you somewhere that you need to be. Temple is going to be the option for you to be the best version of yourself as a basketball player. Uh, I know you, you're you only focusing on Fisher right now, but to save some time and let you and Caden waste time with the cons of the other ones and the pros. Uh, I don't remember George Washington dominating the Atlantic 10, and Pat Chambers just gets a hell no from me. So uh, don't even come back to me on those other two. They're just not even worth considering, in my opinion. I think Fisher's the only one out of this list of three that's something. I don't even want to get started on 57-year-old Bruiser Flint. Uh if you can get Adam Fisher and me and Caden were in Wingstop, uh, the Wingstop line yesterday, uh, <laughs> having a good conversation about where the staff should go as far as assistants. My dream assistant staff right now, pure Philly guys, former Temple players, or high school and AAU coaches around here. My my list was Deontay Christmas, Miguel Boca Chica, and Khalif Wyatt. You get a guy from. Kalo, you get two guys from Kalo, a guy from West Catholic, uh, and a guy from, you know, Westchester University on your staff. All three are young. All three were very good basketball players in their day. All three know the area like the back of their hand. Two of them are two of the greatest players that Temple basketball has had, not just in recent memory, but ever. So I my dream job, not my dream job, my dream staff would be Adam Fisher with those three as his assistants. I'd say go outside the box, change it up, do something that is completely different and will get, get this this key to success at Temple is you start in Philly and then you branch out. You don't work your way from out to in. You work your way from in to out. And I think you fill your staff with some youthfulness that are in touch with the kids today because that's the problem right now with Temple recruiting. They're just not in touch with today's Philly kid. I can tell you who would be, uh, I've talked to enough people to know who Adam Fisher will be looking at as a prospective staff. And it is pretty, pretty exciting. Again, if you subscribe to Al Scoop, you can find that information there, but not, not exactly some of the names that Javon and Caden just talked about, but like on the, on the right track. So yeah, as long as it's on those, you know, along those lines, mm -hmm. I'm perfectly fine. All right. What about a reason why or reasons why it wouldn't work? Not that you have to manufacture any answers here, but any 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 cons with Adam Fisher? I guess him not being a Philly guy, Philly guy would be the only thing. I don't know. Like I said, I, I haven't really found too many negatives for Fisher at the moment just because I'm just not a fan of everyone else that we're hearing and it's I, I i don't know i i hate to be the negative nancy of this whole how, thing how many times have you said that on this podcast i know but it's like i have to reiterate it like i don't like being the negative nancy but somebody's got to be realistic at some point i i mean what 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 is there to say about him though is it not enough years as a you know like he doesn't have the tenure as a head coach you'd You'd say? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the only thing you could say right now. That's it. Is that maybe another guy like Pat Chambers has dominant before with, with Penn State, with Florida, Gulf Coast. Adam Fisher's never been in this position. So maybe it'd be a tougher adjustment versus a guy who has a ton of experience. But I think the assistant coaching resume really stands out. Not just at, just at Penn State, but like 
uh, John said was also worked with Jay Wright at one point. So he has that experience learning from different head coaches. And I think that's the part that shouldn't really matter too much. John, you know what's most important, though? What's that? Temple Temple will have some good, fundamental, play the game the right way. At least two of the white guys on the team that I said they need in the program these days, you know? Devon Edmonds throwing controversy <laughs> hey, out man. there. Listen, man, I'm telling you, as a guy who used to play, there was – I'll tell you what, and you can ask – you can pull – 50 AAU players right now, and they'll tell you that the, the athletic kids from the inner city aren't the team you hate playing at 9 o'clock in the morning. It's the, it's the team from the suburbs with <laughs> seven white kids and two black dudes who don't stop moving the ball, who don't stop moving without the ball, and they don't miss open shots. I'm telling you, Temple's pop. They had Brendan Barry, and they did not use him the right way. I'm telling you, every good basketball team that wins national championships, you need two or three of them. I promise you. And that's coming from the black guy. I, I have All no right. problem leaving that in here. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm just telling you. You think I'm playing around. Javon, you've been very passionate about this point hey, all man. week. I'm very – listen, I'm pro-diversity, you okay. know, and I, I think Temple just could use some in their rotation. All right. So, <laughs> Carl Hobbs, I mean, so you literally think there are no redeeming qualities about Carl Hobbs. I just don't – like – I wouldn't say zero. Like, he's obviously on this list because he's not awful, right? And Rutgers and UConn, yeah, obviously he contributed to their successes, and those have been two of the more successful programs in the East Coast. And he's been a head coach. Yeah, for the past decade. It's just that I'm not so – I'm not completely sold on what George Washington did. I'm, I'm not a big fan of giving someone a promotion, if they haven't dominated their league for at least two years, you know, they did, I, George, I mean, like they did. I mean, it like, I mean, they were very good in the A10 in 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007. They won the A10 tournament in 2005. They were the regular season A10 champions in 2006. They won the A10 tournament in 2007. And in 2005, 2006 and 2007 they went to three straight ncaa tournaments i mean that and and again back then you got temple you got st joe's now granted 2005 2006 that's when that's when changing how long ago was that down slot no it was a while ago definitely a while ago but you on the flip side of it and again i'm not saying that carl hobbs is the right guy for the job i would be more and again i don't know that bruiser flint's gonna get an interview i think he should um, I would I would be on board with an Adam Fisher hire. There are some other candidates that you can again you can read about uh, on our message board. But I'm not I'm not pushing to say that Carl Hobbs is the candidate. But if you're going to say a guy that didn't dominate his league, they did. You know, again that was at a time when Temple wasn't. You know, again 05 and 06. Those were John Cheney's last two years. Uh, so you're at the tail end of the John Cheney era. St. Joe's. I mean, th- there were some good teams in the A10, but they were among the best, if not the best. So he did. He did get, you know, really he was he's been around good programs. He's been around around a lot of postseason basketball at Boston U, at UConn as an assistant, and then at GW, which is not the easiest place to recruit. And a lot of times they've had to rely on uh international players. They've gotten some good international players there. But yeah, three straight years of either winning the the tournament championship or the regular season championship, he got in the three straight NCAA tournaments. Again, let me was, rephrase my let 16 rephrase. years, 16 years ago. You're right. There we go. I'm ago. that's that's my point. I'm recently, when I say recently, mm-hmm. 2015 and on, what have you done for me? He also has experience. He w- was an assistant on the UConn team that won in 2014. So I guess that's a plus. He's been on other programs as a top assistant. And like John said, the fact that he did w- make three straight tour ornaments, I think is impressive at that level. But I guess maybe you have that concern. He's been away as a head coach for a little exactly. bit. But he's yeah. also 61. So he's been there and done it. That's another thing, not to be ageist or anything, but I don't think Temple needs a 60-year-old right now. They, this program is dying. It needs youthful energy. I agree with that. I think a younger candidate would be better and especially help grow with the program, even if you lose them in four or five years. And I thought Kyle made a good point a couple of scoops ago about your next hire might not be a guy who's here for 10, 15 years anymore. Yeah, Fran Dunphy was probably the last one to stay longer than four years. They've got to accept that. Maybe Carl Hobbs is appealing because he is 61. Maybe this is the top job that he's going to get after coaching at George Washington already, being an assistant. Where is he going to go from here unless he really 
turns Temple to a top elite program. He might be a guy they could keep for many years. I don't know how appealing that is to the university. I or... think I think Carl deserves to be a head coach somewhere, and I hope he gets a job somewhere. I just don't think Temple is the somewhere for him, and I don't think he is the someone for Temple. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pat Chambers, polarizing team here. Um, Javon, you're on the record. Do you have any? Do you have any pros for Pat Chambers? Again, before we get into this, so again, if you are not as familiar with Pat Chambers, he he's from the area, played at Philly U, uh, was an assistant at, at Nova from 2004 to 2009. Then he was the head coach at Boston University, uh, got BU to the tournament in 2011. Uh, and then um, from there went on to Penn State. And in nine years at Penn State, did not get them to the tournament. I, I think uh, had COVID not been a thing in 2020, it, it looked like they were potentially on their way to a tournament berth. They were 21 and 10, 11 and 9 in the Big Ten, tied for fifth in the Big Ten. Uh, and then after that, uh, there were allegations into his conduct. I mean, he said said something questionable. I think that got him into trouble with with uh, one of his players. Um, then got back into coaching as an assistant. Um, it was at LaSalle, right? Went to LaSalle, and then yeah, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it was hot with work with Ash Howard at LaSalle, and now he's at Florida Gulf Coast. So they were seventeen and fifteen. This year, so yeah, and again, Temple fans love to hate him because he recruited Tony Carr, recruited, uh, yeah, he recruited Tony Carr, all right, recruited Tony Carr, <laughs> recruited, uh, I mean, recruited Seth Lundy and, and Lamar Stevens, right? So, um, any so Javon, you're saying just no, no pros at all on Pat. Let's see, last year in the A Sun with Florida Golf Coast, 17 and 15. Career record, 518 win percentage. Has been to one NCAA tournament, did not win it. Okay, you got some NITs and some CBIs. Who the hell cares about those? <laughs> uh, let's see, you coached at Villanova, Temple fans hate. You coached at Penn State and took some recruits that Temple would have loved to have. Assistant at LaSalle, Temple fans hate. Adam who, Fisher who, was Adam Fisher was a grad manager for two years on the J right. Who, who, but but he doesn't have the other stuff that I just said about Penn. Um, right. who who on the East Coast likes the city of Boston? You know, no, I just no, I don't. <laughs> I'm I'm out on them. Yeah, I'm kind of with Javon where I don't think it makes much sense to bring in Pat Chambers, mainly because the resume Javon just said. Where's that real success at other than making one tournament in his career? He wasn't exactly great in the A on last year. Javon, and John, you mentioned there's some controversy with him. And I feel like at you know, throughout his career, he wasn't really successful at Penn State. Where's the evidence that he could be the guy that can really lead a program and kind of get him back from not being dead anymore, like Javon said? Because I feel like Temple's in that midpoint where I feel like the best target, just we've talked about all these three guys. Adam Fisher just makes so much sense to me because of his age, because of what he's done recently. Where I feel like Pat Chambers isn't really going to come in here and fix anything. I guess the recruiting part, like you mentioned, John, with Seth Lundy, Tony Carr, if you could come and keep those guys home, and that might be the biggest benefit of it. But on the court coaching, it seems like it just hasn't panned out throughout his career. I don't know what Pat can sell to today's kids of why they should come to Temple. Like, I, 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 I want to, I got to hear his recruiting pitch. Like, if he gets hired, I, I, I will go on the record right now and say, in, in his introductory presser, I'm going to ask. Give me a recruiting pitch. I'm a recruit. Tell me why I need to come to Temple under you. I think, uh, I, again, I of these three, I I think Adam Fisher is the best fit. Pat is a relentless recruiter. I don't think that that if he gets the job, and I don't know that he will, I think Pat Chambers is a guy who would. He is a relentless and tireless worker, whether you like him, whether you don't like him, and you're entitled to your opinion either way. I think Pat is a worker and a grinder, and I think, I mean, look, he regardless of of how he did it or didn't do it i mean he made he came in here and got and got some philly kids energized about penn state and uh i don't think that i don't i think his recruiting pitch would be fine i think he would be a relentless recruiter a relentless worker i do think pat is one of the guys who would come to temple and say i don't see problems or limitations i see solutions i think adam fisher would be that type of guy i think bruiser flint would be that type of guy I think Carl Hobbs, in my humble opinion, I think Carl's accomplished a lot in his career. 
but is Carl Hobbs looking for his last job and, uh, hey, I'd like to be a head coach again, or is he looking to build the best staff he can? Again, I, I, I think Carl Hobbs is also, I mean, he's he kind of like a bruiser, like very excitable on the sidelines, an energetic head coach. I could go either way on Carl Hobbs, but I, I, you know, I think of these three, Adam Fisher would be my top choice. Pat would be a relentless recruiter. Don't know that he's the best fit here, but we'll see. Uh, a lot to be determined on this. We'll get into some spring football here, and then we're going to delve back into plenty more uh, coaching search talk because that is all our mailbag is about. Yeah, um, that's the talk and, of the town. Yeah, and understandably so. But just some spring football stuff for you guys. We do have a lot of coverage on our site from Pro Day. Temple had uh, 13 NFL teams on campus Wednesday. Jose Barbone, Adonica Sanders, Adam Klein, Isaac Moore, Cam Ruiz, Jalen Ware, Mackenzie Morgan, and Zach Gell worked out. Uh, even Will Rogers, uh, who fell out of April with Rod Carey when he was here, he worked out. Can, can I touch on that real quick, John? Sure. Can I please touch on that? Because it's been killing me. What if I and said I'm... no? And and of all the things that we're talking about, with everything going on, Javon is most fired up at this point about Will Rogers. Had you said no, I'd have just recorded a separate track. I'm the one who asked this <laughs> podcast anyway. It was going to find its way into this podcast. I had I Ramir it. cracking up. I, I had Devin it. cracking I up. It. I, I had Caden cracking up. I, I had recorded, Johnny cracking up. I would have recorded a separate day. track. These are like things that we heard about in the 60s where like an engineer snuck in and remastered a song. I love it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. I had all those guys cracking up that pro day. Because this guy, Will Rogers, I just remember, oh, man, Rod Carey doesn't like me. Oh, man, I'm so smart. I play in so many different schemes. I, I, I think I've proven I should be on the field. I remember all of this for the guy not to be a good football player. And he had one more chance to prove it yesterday that he might have some, some, some just sense of talent in him. Not yesterday, Wednesday. John, all of the drills, the 40, the three cone, the shuttle, all of it. He looked awful. The broad jump, he took 50 million tries. Like Will Rogers, Rod Carey didn't dislike you because of who you are as a person. No, because you were not a talented football player. Mm. Shut up. That's that's my brand. That might be the only Will, Will Rogers take on a podcast in America, and you just heard it there, ladies and gentlemen. Kate yeah, because people don't, back. people don't, people aren't around the team as much as we are, or teams as much as we are, and covering them and the inside <laughs> intricacies. I'm, I'm the victim, Rod right? Carey doesn't. No, you stink. <laughs> Best of luck to everyone else who participated in Pro Day the other day, <laughs> especially Cameron Ruiz. Great story. Good uh, ball player too. Okay, Javon, I've never seen you so passionate about a player before. Like Will Roger really gets you going. Yep. Yeah, and he's been passionate about a lot of things, but uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> Javon, um, Javon mentioned uh, the 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 story surrounding Cam Ruiz and the hip injury they had to recover from. Uh, you read about that. Tested um, off the like, charts Wednesday. I wouldn't say off the charts. I think all these guys help themselves in some, some way, shape, or form. Whether any of these guys get drafted, I think that remains to be seen. Uh, this broad jump was impressive. Mm -hmm. I will say that his broad jump was very and, and what's the name and and the individual workouts uh the corner jokes his hips look smooth and fluid footwork mm -hmm. was there tracked the ball well caught with his hands didn't bobble it or anything Cam looked good Wednesday he looked real he good look, he did look pretty he looked pretty sharp um again like he, he's a guy who became you know more of a rotational guy I think you know coming into the season when he wasn't healthy at all. Yeah, so you can check out Johnny's Wizlack story on Cam Ruiz and, again, his recovery from the hip injury he had. I mean, I think we can safely say that Jose Barbone, even like, like Cam, helped himself Wednesday. Barbone had another year of eligibility left, uh, decided to forego it because he had the COVID year. Uh, he ran a 4 4 7 40, which is pretty good. So you couple that with the production this past season, 72 catches, 918 yards, two touchdowns, played in all 12 games, posted 600-yard games, pretty solid uh, talk to my a friend of mine in the scouting field uh, about Barbone. This is one take on him. He said, I, I do think he helped himself. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough, unfortunately, to help him get drafted. Class is deep again, and there's just not enough there. So he weighed in at 181 pounds. He said, so if you weight adjust that, it's actually in like the 15th percentile. So it I, still might have an uphill battle in terms of getting drafted. Uh, Jose did tell us that his agent told him he could be a third day pick. Maybe that'll be the case. We'll see. But um, 
you know, for considering again, these are some of the guys that Temple develops came in with limited, I don't want to say limited expectations, but um, I think he helped himself. He, does he help himself in terms of getting drafted or are all these guys going to be looking at, uh, you know, just getting to someone's camp? We'll see. Uh, Adam Klein measured in at 6'3", 294. And he moved well too. He did. Broad jumped eight feet, eight inches, did 19 reps of 225 pounds. Post the vertical 29 inches. Again, those numbers don't compare to like, if you're a, 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 if you like watching the combine, you see what a guy like Brake Freeland did from B- BYU did like a, a 10 foot broad jump at the combine, but they're still not, not those numbers, but solid numbers. Isaac Moore was a great interview. Again, you can go to our site and listen to uh, the audio from Isaac's interview is always entertaining. I mean, he's just, he's just a fun dude to talk to talks about how he came in and just wanting an opportunity out of Sweden. He's already been drafted by the the Philadelphia stars in the USFL. Adam Klein was telling us how he never really got a call and Adam had to tell me he got drafted. So, but he's still going to be taking his best shot at getting into an NFL camp. And he talked about, you know, he's going to be finishing off his grad degree, wanting to teach and live in Southern Italy and doesn't sound like a bad life. We were talking about that. So, um, so a lot of pro day coverage that you can check out on our site. Uh, as we continue to get post-practice access to some of the players and position coaches, we've done a lot on the safeties. That's one of the deeper positions on the roster. We'll have stories coming up uh, from Johnny on Isaac Moore, like I mentioned before, from Pro Day, uh, from Max Dinenberg on Dante Wright. Uh, he's got one up on the site now on Jalen Ware, another safety uh, for tomorrow's availability. We're recording this on Friday afternoon. We'll be talking to Temple's linebackers coach, Chris Woods, along with Jordan McGee. And Vandy Rigby. So again, the the spring football coverage is ongoing. Stay tuned uh, to the site for all that. Let's delve into the mailbag here to to finish things off. We've got a pretty full mailbag. We did uh, a guy that has uh, freelanced for us before. Works down in radio in Houston now. Greg Frank. Greg is always full of opinions. Greg, Javon, you and Greg could go. Dear Lord, that podcast. You guys would just. You guys would, you might have met your match in, in with Greg in terms of takes. He's uh, he's energetic. He texted me three questions here. He said answer anywhere from zero to three of them, but just had to get some of these off my chest. So I'll try to condense these. First one is what's going on with the search? A bunch of programs have made coaching hires. So is Arthur Johnson waiting on someone still coaching in the tournament? If not, what would some other explanations be for the delay? Probably should want a permanent voice recruiting the portal soon, right? So a couple of things I'll address here for Greg, and I think it's important that people know this. Yes, has the search taken more than a week? Absolutely. Have you seen other programs move quickly on candidates like like Providence with Kim English? Absolutely. One thing I would not discount, whoever they're interviewing, don't think that these candidates, even if they have a job or don't have a job right now, they're still talking to kids in the portal. And they're still talking to coaches and saying, if I end up at Temple, you're coming with me. I would almost guarantee that Adam Fisher is saying that. I would almost guarantee that, again, do we have this on the record? No, but this is this is how the business goes. So, Greg, I don't know that they're necessarily losing a ton of time there. Um, yeah, it's gone on for a while. Could Arthur be waiting on somebody in the tournament? Potentially. We'll see. Uh, Javon, you had your hand up. You wanted to add in on? Yeah, yeah uh, Greg, last part of that question probably should want a permanent voice recruiting the portal soon right um no I, I i they need to speed this thing up quickly from what i'm hearing uh temple six players in the portal the four who said they'll you know give the new coaching staff you know a some chance. type of chance they're getting antsy they they've got opportunities they need to let somebody know something real soon so you know, I doubt Arthur listens to this podcast, but I'll say the same thing that I just said on WHIP about an hour and some change ago. Buddy, might want to speed it up. Um, Coming close to just not having a chance to bring any of those four guys back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and the second question here from Greg, going back to the Matt Langle thing, why would they not be interested in Matt Langle if those reports are true? Is John, Arthur Johnson trying too hard to revamp the athletic department and get away from Philly guys slash people with temple ties? On one hand, that's admirable, but on the other hand, that's close-minded to legitimate candidates like Matt, regardless of their background. Again, I understand that this is maybe one of the most debated topics to come out of this, unless we are truly sitting down and talking to Arthur Johnson on the record. And even if we talked to him off on the record after the search, I would guarantee, almost guarantee that he's not going to talk about people he 
did interview or did not interview. I, I we're also assuming too that yeah, well, I say we, some people I think are assuming that Matt Langel was waiting by the phone for Temple to call and Temple just never reached out. Um, I think that Matt very quite possibly could have said, hey, love Temple, going home wouldn't be such a bad thing. I'm from South Jersey, played at, you know, he's from Morristown in South Jersey, played at Morristown, Morristown Friends, played at Penn for Fran Dunphy, but he also has a pretty good life up in Hamilton, New York. Yeah, I've never been up there, but I'm saying he's done a really good job at Colgate. And I don't know that he was ever really, really pushing hard for this job. So it could have been a mutual disinterest thing uh, on, on both ends. Um, third and final part of Greg's question here, he's saying everyone talks about Temple not having NIL money for it not being a good job at the moment. The money isn't appearing out of thin air until you start to win. Whoever the hire is might have to crawl through the mud a bit before getting Temple back to the tournament regularly, but isn't that still good enough ceiling for the program to make the job somewhat desirable? The job um, still, you know, well, go ahead, Javon. No, I, I was going the money part is, so I will say you and Kyle did set me straight a few weeks ago of someone needs a head coaching job. They're just not going to turn one down in college. Like they just want to get their foot in the door mm -hmm. and do the best they can at that job. Mm -hmm. However, John, you and I, They've both done our fair share of sourcing on this. The NIL money at Temple was close to non-existent compared to their competition in this area when it comes to recruiting. Rutgers, Seton Hall, Penn State, Villanova, Maryland. Well, Penn uh, State's still Penn State's also still fairly far behind on NIL. I think they're trying to do better there, but that's I'm sure that factored into to Micah Shrewsbury's decision too. Yeah, uh, um, football. Pitt great situation for football but not so much for basketball but basketball basketball is catching i've been told they are still in a better spot than temple which is mm -hmm. they're supposed they're just a bigger school bigger alumni base they're big 10 school all that stuff um syracuse pit like when it comes to the schools in that whole region of, of classic big east territory all the way down to classic acc territory temple is lagging behind uh which I don't think that hurts when it comes to getting guys in. I think where it'll hurt, and I, and I mean for a good coach, a good coach shouldn't have a problem getting guys in with the small package that they can give these kids. Mm -hmm. What's going to hurt is every offseason you have to re-recruit your own kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where the NIL is going to hurt. Like Temple probably will get some good players in under their new coach under its new coach. What's going to happen is good players are going to wind up leaving out for better NIL opportunities. And, I mean, that's just the world of college basketball right now. Like, Temple could very much become a farm system pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's the world of college athletics in general. We look at college football, college basketball, that's what happens, especially for these smaller mid-major schools and schools like Temple and the American Athletic Conference. I think it's tough to keep your top guys each year because now it's a recruiting and they're going to leave, and they're going to get offers. And there's, it's tough to keep a kid here when you can't offer them as much money as a ACCC or an SEC school. Yeah, and I think, well, again, I think a new coach, there's opportunity there to come in. We've talked at length about NIL with Temple, and I think, I do think, and again, I don't know Carl Hobbs' situation as well. I think if you... I would have to think that if Carl Hobbs, even if he's 61, would want to come in and do well. I do think, again, up, and we're, if we're limiting this just to the people that we're talking about on this podcast, I think guys like Adam Fisher and Bruiser Flint, and again, Bruiser may end up not interviewing at all. Again, to recap, I've been told that the two sides have talked, but I don't know that he's received a formal interview. I don't know that he will receive a formal interview. But if I don't if, think he needs one. I would disagree with you. I think that if Bruiser came in, he would, I think both Adam Fisher and Bruiser Flint would really work their tails off to say, okay, we need, we need progress on NIL. We need this collective needs help. What, what can we do? Can we talk to former players? Can we talk to businesses in the area? You know, I, I think that they would be energized. There's no question that Temple is far behind, not just some teams in the American programs in the Atlantic 10, on on nil so uh 
a lot more to get to here in the mailbag beyond. But, but John, can I can I throw a counter argument in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bruiser. Okay, he's done some recruiting at IU in Kentucky. Last time he was a good head coach, 2012. So 11 years ago. Have you ever like, talked to Bruiser Flint before? No, I haven't, but I've got a resume right in front. John, I don't care how nice the person is. That's when you mess up. I'm not up. talking about nice. I'm talking about he is a very smart, very charismatic. I think Bruiser could go anywhere on the face of this of this globe and recruit somebody. I think he would be very, very good there. Lack of energy, lack of care would not be issues with Bruiser. He would not, work his ass off in this job. I'm not saying that, but success has to factor in at some point, John. Well, this guy hasn't been successful as a head coach in 11 years. Well, has Adam Fisher ever been a head coach? I'd rather give the chance to a young guy who hasn't had the opportunity I like yet Adam Fisher. I than, like Adam Fisher than a lot. To, than give it to 57-year-old Bruiser Flint who, like I said, has not been a good head coach in 11 years. It's time for somebody else to get a chance. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, got a ton of other mailbag questions to get to here from the message boards. Uh, the next one from the screen name, what, what to you, if there was ever an episode that you needed a beer while you record, is it this week? Uh, nah, I mean, nah. you know, what, which one you needed one for, well, not needed, but it would have been great for it for, right. uh, uh, the, the draft episode, the fantasy draft, kick one back and draft your all time yeah. basketball team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, you know what I mean? Look, at the end of the day, this is fun. We, you know, we we this is part of our careers. We love it. It's fun. It's entertaining. Um, can covering a coaching search get a little exhausting? Sure, it can because it it stretches every portion of your brain and every ounce of your patience because you do have to source everything. You have to, there's so much BS floating around out there. Um, sometimes people will blow up your phone and say, Hey, I heard this, and you'll say, Where'd you hear it? Well, a buddy of mine told me, I'm like, oh, why, like, why are you wasting my time? So that's the worst thing. I know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that said this. And I don't want to name names, but I don't, I'm not a fan of some of the, the, the national takes that have been thrown around out there. There's been a lot of say the names, say the (laughs) names, say the names. Seth Uh, Davis, John Stanley is not coming to Temple. Say it, say it, John. I mean, that's one of them. I mean, look, I mean, if, if Temple, I mean, Don Staley is beyond qualified for this job. If Temple were able to get Don Staley, they would be beyond lucky to have her. But Don makes between her base salary and incentives close to $3 million a year. She's literally one of the best coaches on the face of this earth. I understand why people say there's only one person you should be reaching out to. It's Don Staley. And I'm not trying to like stir the pot when I say this, but it's almost kind of like a little sexist to, to almost imply that like Dawn has to come to Temple and coach a men's team to like do the next thing in her career. Dawn has been an Olympian. She has literally carried the colors of the United States of America into the arena for the Olympics. She has carried the country's colors. She has won national championships in South Carolina. She gets like, why should she come to Temple to take a pay cut to coach here, unless Temple was going to pony up four million dollars to to coach here, I, again, well, unless she just wants that much of a challenge. Yeah, maybe so. And she, I think she'd be up for it. She's incredible. But um, I, I mean, just even beyond the Don Staley stuff, there are just so many takes that beyond matter of opinion that that don't make sense. So I don't know if you guys ever felt like you needed a beer while uh, you're both of of age. I can talk to you about that. Have you ever felt like you needed a beer while covering this? No, did I? No, I don't. I don't think so. All right. No, guys. Yeah, so I'm just you guys are. Are you treat your bodies like temples? You tr- you just drink water. You you drink 175 ounces of water a day to just to just keep yourselves in in peak physical condition. Uh, the next question here comes from Diamond and Broad again from our basketball message board at alscoop.com. His question is: It accurate to say AJ and company, meaning Arthur Johnson? Didn't intend to fire Aaron McKee and hoped he would change his staff. I say this because it took almost a week to lock down a search firm and another week to interview. I don't know about that. I have I have um, had enough people tell me that Arthur Johnson did talk to Aaron McKee about changing, you know, changing his uh, changing his staff, and Aaron declined. I, I again. Arthur Johnson has not told us this personally, but I, I would imagine that that Arthur Johnson probably 
knew where this was headed. You know, he's entitled to to make that decision in the position that he's in. Has it taken longer? Sure, it has. Uh, but I don't I don't think it comes from a position of, oh my gosh, we are just so beside ourselves. How could this have been the development? I'm so shocked uh, that we now have to engage in this coaching search. Uh, I don't I don't think that's don't think that's where it came from. Number two, if Matt Langle indeed had no or has no interest in the job, any sense why? I already talked about that. I think if uh, unless the unless it was going to make total sense, you know, again, I haven't talked to Matt Langle. I know people who are close to him, but it doesn't make sense for him. And I don't necessarily blame him. He could wait this cycle out and, and see what's around, or maybe he's perfectly content. Had Question. He been, what's that? Question for you. Sure. Why, why doesn't it make sense? Because I don't buy that. At least not completely. I don't know. I mean, maybe he, maybe he, if he's going to make the jump from Colgate to the next job, maybe he wants to land in a place where there are, you you do have better. And look, when I say NIL support in place, like that has to come from donors, like fans. I'm not necessarily like pinning that on Temple. I mean, Temple does make NIL resources available to its players, but you know, maybe he just doesn't feel like it's a good fit right now. There are a lot of factors that go into why somebody does or does not uh, go into a position. But again, like there might've been mutual disinterest on, on both sides. Uh, Diamond and Broad does have a football question here. How big of a leap slash improvement can we expect from the offensive line? Um, I've got some thoughts on this, but I want to throw it over to you guys first. Kane, why don't we start with you? Do you think there could be a leap in improvement from, from the offensive line this year? I think it's possible because it's another year with Chris Wiesahan, and I think he's proven as an offensive line coach that he could develop guys in the past. So you got these different players coming in, like Diego Barajas and Melvin Ciani, and they seem to have the physical tools. But at the same time, it's tough to project because you lost your two most experienced offensive linemen who were at Temple Spring or Temple's Proto the other day, Adam Klein and Isaac Moore. So you lose those guys who've started for the last three to four years. So you got to plug and play guys who are not super proven. You get back Victor Stofo, I think flashed at times last year, James Famine as well. But I think going into this year, I think it's the biggest question mark on this roster because you really don't know who's going to be those guys to step up. I don't know if I saw enough from last year from Richard Rodriguez and Wisdom Corshi or Bryce Toman or anyone to make me feel really confident. But I think the fact that Chris Weezer has a proven track record makes me feel more confident. But there's not enough proof that these guys can necessarily step up and be consistent starters yet. Um, yeah, I talked I talk to Weeze Wednesday. He is a big fan of the group he has this year. Uh, he named at least four guys that he projects as the starters this year that remind him of some other pretty good players that he's coached. Like each, all four of them, he had a good player comp for. Uh, so Weeze is excited about the O-line unit. Uh, Weez knows what he's talking about. He's also not a a, a sugar coder whatsoever. So I'll take his word for it. If Weez is excited about his unit, I'll be excited about it. Yeah, I, I I think there's definitely potential for a leap and improvement with the offensive line. I'm not trying to discount what they're losing with Adam Klein and with Isaac Moore. Uh, I I think that if you get and it's an if you know Rich Rodriguez went through a lot health wise. And if he's healthy, I think he's, I think he's fine at center. Do I think he's an NFL center? No, I don't. But I mean, you've, you've heard Chris Weezan, if you follow our coverage, if you listen to him, uh, I believe it was last Saturday talking to reporters, he's very high on Melvin Ciani. Melvin Ciani's young and raw, but again, these are the guys, you know, it, it, any position, but especially offensive line, if there are some physical limitations, there's only so much you can get out of guys, but I think he does look at a James Famenu, uh, a, a guy like Victor Stoffel, a, a Melvin Ciani, a Diego Barajas. He talked about how Diego Barajas was so great above the neck, meaning he's smart. And he's, Weez has been saying that for years, whether he's been coaching uh, Matthew Hennessy, Deion Dawkins. I'm not saying that any of these guys are going to be that good. We'll see. But I think he sees more potential this year and, and more talent and ability at that in that room than he did last year. Sure, they'll have their ups and downs, but I think you could see a, a significant improvement from the offensive line. Again, they're not, it's not like he's got, it's not like he's starting, you know, four juniors and a senior and three of them are all conference guys, but 
I, like Javon said, I think he has a proven enough track record. We're not in the business of saying here that that every coach is infallible and they're beyond being questioned. But I think I think Chris does get a certain benefit of the doubt there, where uh, if he's excited about some of these guys, he typically does not throw out compliments just to throw them out. And I think he knows what a good player looks like. I think he knows what potential looks like. So I do think there's potential there. Um, the next one, we got a new subscriber here. The screen name is FJA329. For the basketball head coach, will Arthur Johnson follow the formula he used in hiring Drayton, a well-traveled assistant coach, or will he see, uh, excuse me, will he, um, uh, lost my place here, will he, uh, will he seek out someone with head coaching experience? I mean, yeah, that's the, that's the question. Part of what makes this complicated is there's no, you know, I've covered coaching searches before where you're like, okay, that that's the guy that makes sense. Whether it was football, you know, when Steve Adazio left and Matt Rule was interviewed the second time, we kind of knew that that Matt Rule was their top choice the whole time. He was the guy that made sense. Uh, this most recent football coaching search, Fran Brown was in the mix, but I think anybody who might have known something about Arthur's thinking said, keep an eye on Stan Drayton, keep an eye on Stan Drayton, even though he'd been pretty much a lifetime running backs coach, you could start to connect the dots. And there was a name there that are a couple of names that made sense this time around. If everybody was thinking, Oh, it's going to be Matt Langle. It's going to be Matt Langle. And if you source this and you talk to people and you knew that Matt Langle was out of the mix, well, now it is, it's, it's a, a very list of names and there isn't that one guy where you're like, my gut tells me at this, my gut tells me it's that. So Stan could go in a number of different directions here, and none of them would entirely surprise me. Uh, follow the formula he used in hiring Drayton, a well-traveled assistant coach. I mean, I, I think with Drayton, I don't know that the formula there was a well-traveled assistant coach. Yes, I'm sure it helped that Stan was uh, at Ohio State, had a couple of stops in the NFL. I'm sure all of that helped, but there must have been a good relationship there. At Texas, I understand that there's speculation about Rodney Terry, the acting head coach at Texas. I mean, if Rodney Terry wins a couple more games this weekend with the Longhorns, it would be totally wild to me that a guy that gets Texas to the final four would not be retained by Texas. That could have happened by now for all we know. I think we're also making some assumptions that just because Arthur Johnson and Rodney Terry crossed paths at one point at Texas means that they are the best of friends or even have a relationship or have a great relationship. We don't know that for certain, you know? So I, I really don't know. And I think that's what makes this covering this, this search a challenging one, because I don't know that there is a tried and true formula that he's going to be sticking with. They have a search committee and they have a search firm that's, that's assisting with this. And the, the number of candidates that we've uh, been able to identify or source out or confirm they kind of run the spectrum, even like we've got the three we've talked about on this pod or technically throwing a fourth in there with Terry. You've got a young assistant coach like Adam Fisher, uh, a well -tra Carl Hobbs is both a well-traveled assistant coach and someone with head coaching experience. And Pat Chambers fits that mold. So I don't know. I, I know that's a whole long winded way of saying, I don't know, but I'd be lying if I said that I knew for certain that like there's, this is Arthur Johnson's thought process here. This is, his tried and true formula. I don't know. I don't know for certain, unless I'm sitting in the room with Arthur and saying, break it down for me, but I don't think there is one line of thought on this. You guys have any, any strong opinions on this that I hit this on the head or do you guys feel in your heart that like, he's looking in one direction with this? I, I think I've said all I, I have to say about it. Uh, you're just tired they, and irritated at this point. Yeah, there's just like nothing else. You want to the say search about to go them. away. You want them, you want the players to coach themselves next year, Javon. You know what I like, John? 350,000 a year to coach Temple basketball, my damn self. You know? And 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 I'm going to call up the guys I said is that I'd want as assistants and listen, just get behind this young guy. Like, I got you. I'm I'm going to take us places. You know, that's what I that'd be my pitch. Like Deontay, Khalif. Miguel, I'm going to take us places. Just get on my back and help me get the guys in here. And with so, the help of you three, wait, we will so make this thing work. Deontay Christmas, Khalif Wyatt, and Miguel Boca Chica are your three bench assistants? Yeah. Who's your who's your ops guy? Who's your video guy? Who are the so, ops? So, oh, so, so that's when 
they helped me out with that. A good coach lets his staff help him make some decisions. So my director of my video direct, my video coordinator, my director of basketball operations, my strength coach, my training staff, all that good stuff. They'll help me fill that out. But I just need the 350 a year. Give me those three guys and we'll fill out the rest of the staff and we'll make something shit. Because the problem is even even if we go seven and, and 25, them 25 games are going to be we lost because we were fouling late in the game. There's it's going to be some fight. It's going to be some competitiveness. There's going to be some basketball that gets played because I coach basketball. I'm not with the nonsense. Ain't no stand around and take bad shots on it. No, you can come sit down. They're going to play in the system. We're going to take good shots. We're going to pass the ball. If you don't defend, your scholarship is gone. Like, I'm I'm not with the nonsense. At the end of the season, if I don't like how we play when we go down to Fort Worth, I'm, I will go in that locker room, go ahead and hit that portal or test your luck in the draft because your scholarship won't be renewed next year. It's not a, there's not a place for you here. Would you allow if that happens, would you allow Caden to break the story? Would you allow me to break the story? You would will you fight want... to the death. You you will fight till the death for the story. <laughs> fight for the death. Yeah, you will fight till the death for the story. Caden, um, how wild would it be for you to interview your good friend Javon Edmonds if he gets the temple head coaching job? Be interesting, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, y'all would love me. I would oh, you be listen. critical of it. Javon would leak all sorts of stuff to us. He would be so, he would just be like, you, cause you can't hold things in. So much stuff would leak out. Arthur Johnson would talk to you, be like, Javon, I, I know who you're talking to. You need to stop. I can't hold. Well, okay. Uh, listen, this whole notion that Javon Edmonds has a big mouth has to stop. Number one. <laughs> number two, when I say, when I, when I say you guys would love me, I mean the, the press conferences you guys would love. The introductory presser and the post game pressers you guys would be in love with. Like, instant quotable material easily i agree with that i'm just not sure how to write that story temple high hires head coach who hasn't played basketball since high school never coached hey listen i'm five and oh as a jv head coach okay, okay. Uh, coach jv <laughs> like what's the headline of that store oh listen the, i would tell you rip me in the in the brief oh. of me getting hired oh. You you want the criticism yeah i like no no because no if i'm writing the story i'd rip temple too so i tell you <laughs> Rip, rip the rip the decision, and then check back with me in two years when this program looks like it's got something going. I and, hope, and then that, boom, there's your story. I hope that whenever we get this, whenever we get this edited and 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 posted and distributed to to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all the major platforms, I hope that we do it in time. That somebody might be taking a late trip home from work and they're somewhere and they tune in a little bit later and someone says they are considering. Some guy named Javon Edmonds for the head coach. <laughs> and I hope this goes viral just for pure entertainment purposes. If that happens, I'll call Arthur myself. Be like, hey, listen, give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving right along. Uh, Temple 22 from the message board asks us in the mailbag, in the years of running Al Scoop, what are some of the topics that, that got the most traffic on the board? Is it a specific coaching search? Is it Rashi Jordan? Is it the Brunsons? Uh, yeah, Temple 22, it's all of the above. I, we, and, you know, I talked to my staff about this. Javon and Caden certainly notice this and, and know this. Um, yeah, I mean, coaching changes drive content and numbers. Recruiting, that would, you know, Rashi Jordan, who played at Vox High School, Temple recruited him for four years, didn't get him. Ended up at uh, St. John's, unfortunately ran into some legal issues and hope his life is back on track at this point. And then the Brunsons referring to the whole Rick Brunson saga where Rick was set to join Dump staff. There were charges against them. Those charges were dropped. I'd like to point that out so that Rick doesn't get upset. Uh, Jalen Brunson was going to come to Temple. That would have uh, been quite a development for Temple. Jalen changed his mind, ended up at Villanova, wins two titles there. Obviously a tough pill for Temple to swallow. Yeah, all that stuff has uh, generated a lot of traffic on the board. And it, it's all because of anticipation. We talk about this as human beings, we all look forward to what's next, what's next, what's next. And that is the underlying theme and factor and all that stuff of coaching searches and recruiting. It's, it's intrigue. So yeah, I mean, they've certainly created some interesting times, interesting conversations on the board, but it all goes back to anticipation. It's the, the, the coaching search stuff, recruiting. I have told these guys, sitting here with me, I could write what I think is like the best story known to humankind. And I could be so proud of my writing and scene setting, 
And then if Javon comes to me and says, uh, hey, uh, I just talked to Justin Edwards. He told me that he's changing his mind and he's coming to Temple. Anyone would check out of my story and go right to Javon's. If Caden came to me and said, hey, I just got off the phone with you know, a four-star recruit from Pittsburgh who's going to pick Temple tomorrow over Penn State and Ohio State, you can be guaranteed that no one would give a damn about my story. So it's always the recruiting. It's always the stuff that relates to anticipation and intrigue. Uh, here's the million dollar question. Green Street, Al, if you were a betting person, who is our next head coach? Javon, I'll go with you. And then Caden, I'll go to you next. And uh, I'll give my answer, even though I don't know if I have one at this point. Yeah, no, no, don't don't put us on the record for this. Um, I will answer this question like this, the same way I answered it earlier in the pod. Well, not really, but I'm just going to copy and paste it. Um, if it's not Adam Fisher, I will be very interesting in that introductory presser. Hmm. As in very interesting as a, as a reporter, as a as a as a questioner. Yes, as a, as a question asker. Mm. I will be very interesting that day. I like it. Very interesting. What does that mean? Very interesting. Very inquisitive. I think um, I might be getting another. Hey, go easy on my programs type of conversation. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> no, because it's just going to be all right. Like if it's Bruiser, Bruiser, you haven't been a successful head coach in eleven years. Why should fans believe you're going to do the job here? I think Bruiser would be again. We're getting ahead of ourselves here because again, as of as of 544 on Friday, I don't know the Bruiser Flint is even interviewed again. Something might have changed today. I don't I just don't want to mislead people on that. We talked yeah, about no, I'm just Spencer saying, Center, like hy but... hypothetically, like my question for Carl would be, hey, you haven't been a conference champion as a head coach since 2006. Why should somebody have faith in you? There we go. Hey, Temple, there's a there's a branch of Temple fans that hate your guts. <laughs> why 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 should we think like I'm I'm so serious? Like mm -hmm. actually, no, that might be an Arthur question. Arthur. There's a branch of Temple fans that hate the guys next to you guts. Why did he get a phone call? I'm so serious. Like, right hand to God. Hayden, what do you got? Who's – who's so Javon, on the record, we'll tell you that Javon did not predict who Temple's next head coach is going to be, but he, he, he promised, he teased – he teased something for the future. If there's a press conference next week or the week after that we can look forward to. Caden, what do you think? Do you have, if you are a betting person, who is Temple's next head coach? Part of me wants to go with Adam Fisher because he seems like the logical choice. He's young. Uh, he's recruited the area. I think he'd be a nice hire for Temple. I think that would make Temple fans the most happy. But who is to say that Penn State is going to offer him to replace Michael Shrewsbury? Because he still could be an interim candidate. He was there. He was successful. Maybe they want to promote within. So I'll throw a little bit of a curveball, and I think Temple will hire Pat Ch Chambers. Oh, boy. Mm. And if Temple hires Pat Chambers, Javon is going to – oh, here we go. What are you going to say? <laughs> I, I, no, I just got my answer for director of basketball ops because uh, these guys are great guys who know the game of basketball, and I hate to see them go unemployed. Uh, I'd call Chris or Jimmy up to see if they'd want to be my director of ops, you know? On my hypothetical staff, if I get the job, so let's not rule this out as a possibility. You are predicting Javon Edmonds is predicting that Javon Edmonds will be Temple's next head coach. Listen, let's say there are three billion universes out there. There is one in which I get the job. My prediction is it this one? Tune in to see. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I wish people could see the expression on your face on Zoom here. Um, this is going to sound like a cop out. If you were a betting person, John DeCarlo, who is who is Temple's next head coach? Uh, my prediction is that it's someone. It's more. It's not one of the three names that we're talking about. I do think that Adam Fisher would be a very good hire. I do. My prediction is not worth a bag of peanuts right now at this time of, of the day, but. My prediction, which could be totally wrong, is it's going to be someone that we're not talking about. It could be someone who we've maybe mentioned earlier in the podcast could be someone that we've talked about on our message boards. That's just a prediction and nothing more. This has been one of the, the more complex searches to cover green street. Al, I don't have a firm read on it just yet. Again, I'm comfortable telling you that I think Fisher will be a good hire. I think it, you know, with all due respect and love to my good friend, Javon Edmonds here, I think bruiser would be a good hire. I think there are other good hires to be made out there. Um, uh, my early prediction is that it's not going to be Adam or Bruiser and that it's going to be someone else. 
that we haven't talked about. I know that sounds like a teaser. I know it sounds like a cop out, but it's my best guess. Next question here comes from Esther Boyer is the screen name. Does the state of the university and its leadership have any impact on this coaching search? I'm going to sound boring and literal when I say this, unless I am reading the minds of the of of people who are interested in the job or asking about it. I don't truly know. I could see how someone might might think that. And I haven't could, thought about that. That's mm -hmm. interesting. That could be something that steered Lingo away from wanting the job. Like, hey, y'all about to vote your president out with zero confidence. Why? Why do I want to be affiliated with that university? Um, I don't, I don't know, but I, I will. I, no, I, I'm not saying I know anything about. I'm, I, I'm no, just, I yeah, just want to be shocked. I'm just yeah, steering you know. it back to this. I mean, could it? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, if you're, if you are, you know, if you a guy like Kim English and you knew that maybe Providence was saying, "Hey, sit tight," you know, then yeah, maybe Kim English like looks at Temple and says, "Ah, oh, there seems to be." A lot of unpredictability there. Maybe I won't look at Temple. Maybe, but I don't know. It would be absolutely, totally irresponsible of me to say otherwise. I'll steer it back to this. I think there are enough people who are interested. Like I know Adam Fisher wants the job. To be clear, I have not talked to Adam Fisher. I have not talked directly to Bruiser Flint, but I've talked to enough people to know that guys like that really want the job and see possibilities more so than challenges with the Temple job. So could it be possibly do i know that for certain no um had someone else was uh um oh so that's more just a, a comment than a question last question here unless we're missing any others of these potential candidates for the temple job and i realize they may not all get interviews this is coming from keith 90 is the screen name of these potential candidates for the temple job and i realize they may not all get interviews who do you think would do the best job recruiting for Temple? Please rank in order. And your choices are, uh, well, we'll, well, I'm going to keep it to uh, the, the people that we've mentioned here. There's a name that Keith mentions here, and I don't want to give it away because it is someone who, who is interviewed. But again, I want to I want to keep that as value added stuff for our subscribers. So your choices are Bruiser Flint, Matt Langle, Adam Fisher, Carl Hobbs, or Pat Chambers. Who would recruit, who would do the best job recruiting? Please rank them in order. So you got Bruiser, Matt Langle, Adam Fisher, Carl Hobbs, and Pat Chambers. Best recruiters for Temple in that order. I'm going to give, I'll, I'll, you know what, I'll start. I'll, I'll, I'll give you mine. I go, I go, I go Adam Fisher, Bruiser Flint, Pat Chambers, again, we know that Matt's not interested, but if we were to throw him in the in the mix there, Matt Langle, and I put Carl Hobbs last. That's not to say that Carl is not smart enough to to put together a good staff, but that would be that would be my five. That's my order. Yeah, that's my order. All right. Caden, any any thoughts on that one? You want to switch things up or not? I don't really want to switch anything up. I think maybe Matt Chambers or not uh, Matt. Matt Chambers would be number two because he's proven it before that he can get mm -hmm. those guys like Seth Lundy. So maybe I have him leap Bruiser Flint. Mm -hmm. But I think other than that, it'd be about the same. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see. We've certainly covered uh, all sorts of interesting stuff on the pod this week, including a scenario in which Devon Edmonds is Temple's next men's basketball coach. Hey John, listen. If Larry Doc decides he wants to retire, I'm going to need an SID. You know, you, I, I can put in a good word. You know, <laughs> you imagine who would we'd have fun. Team? Well, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. We'd have fun. I'd have you to would. promise Chelsea I'll keep you safe on the road. <laughs> keep me safe on the road. I just want to eat a good meal and go to bed. That's all. Uh, <laughs> I think. I think it'd be. I think I'd be fine unless we're traveling on like rickety airplanes and buses. I think I would be, I think I would be safe on the road. I don't think my wife would have too much to worry about. I mean, anyway, I'm very frugal. All the money is going into the players and the program. <laughs> <laughs> my per diem would be seven bucks a day. You'd be like a lot of water, a lot of napkins. You have to cook your own stuff. Tupperware containers, mason jars. You got to, you got to. Yeah. If we can cut costs, we're cutting them. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all for uh, joining us for another episode of The Scoop. Again, The Scoop is brought to you by Greenspan and Greenspan. Again, we're really thankful for 
uh, their support, Greenspan and Greenspan Injury Lawyers, bringing you the scoop as they will continue to do. Uh, thanks to Javon and Caden. Thanks to all of you. Like I said, our numbers are way up on the podcast. Could not do without you. Again, if you haven't, um, you know, if you're interested in listening to some stuff and the craziness of the coaching search, you haven't listened to the John Baum episode, the Joe Klecko episode. Again, Joe is going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame this summer. Of course, started his career uh, here in Philadelphia at Temple. Had a lot of fun talking to Joe. Again, we will continue to bring you the latest spring football coverage. And of course, we'll stay on top of the coaching search. And we'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend.